This is how the Earth looks like, 66 million years ago. In a time known as Mesozoic Era, where the all continentals, were part of single mass, called Pangaea. That world, was dominated by living giant reptiles. We call them, dinosaurs. Scientists, divide the Mesozoic Era, into three periods. The Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. The dinosaurs lived between 245 and 66 million years ago. But at the end of the Cretaceous period, a global catastrophe caused a sudden mass extinction of three quarters of the plant and dinosaurs on Earth. Scientists call this the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Everyone knows how dinosaurs died. But what happened the day after the mass extinction? Today, we will be looking into that. Over the years, scientists have proposed several theories for this extensive die-off. But many believe the fall of giant meteor or asteroid impact event may have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Imagine sunrise on the last day of the Mesozoic era. As this lost world of dinosaurs squawks and buzzes and whirs to life. There is an asteroid the size of a mountain 460 megatons, with roughly 6 miles in diameter, is hurtling toward Earth, along the coast, of what is now Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, at about 40,000 miles an hour. At this speed, it can travel from Los Angeles, to New York, in only 4 minutes. For a few fleeting moments, a fireball, that appears far bigger, and brighter than the sun, streaks through the sky. An instant later, the asteroid slams into Earth, with an explosive yield, estimated at over 100 trillion tons of TNT. This is about 100 million times the energy, released by the Tsar bomb, created by Soviet, which is also, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever, created and tested. If you do not know, how massive is the Tsar bomb destruction? Here is the comparison. The little boy and fat man, were the nuclear bombs that the United States drop on Japan in 1945. Created over 20,000 feet tall mushroom cloud. When we go to 40,000 feet, that is where the average commercial airline altitude. Followed by the Lickhorn, which produced one megaton blast. Next, is the Castle Bravo. Also the most powerful nuclear bomb, detonated by the United States, created over 100,000 feet mushroom cloud. But it is the Russians, who boast the most powerful nuclear bomb ever detonated. The 50 megaton Tsar bomb, which created the most powerful, man-made explosion ever. Imagine what would it looks like, 100 million times of the Tsar bomb destruction, that ends the dinosaur era. When one edge of the asteroid, already hit the ground, the other edge, was still higher than the flight zone, of the Boeing 747. The collision struck at Yucatan Peninsula, in Mexico. The asteroid, left behind a massive crater, covered half of the Gulf of Mexico, with 93 miles in diameter, and 12 miles in depth. It is also known as, the Chicxulub Crater. The impact, would have caused a mega tsunami, over 330 feet tall. The asteroid displaced, so much water from the ocean, that huge wave crashed on the coastline, for 10 hours washed over the continents. Even huge dinosaurs, like Diplodocus, couldn't survive. A cloud of hot dust, ash, and steam, would have spread from the crater, in less than a second. Excavated material, along with pieces of the impactor, ejected out of the atmosphere, by the blast, would have been heated to incandescence upon re-entry, broiling the Earth's surface, and possibly, igniting wildfires. Those dinosaurs, weren't died from drowning, would kill by the fire. Meanwhile, colossal shockwaves, would have triggered global earthquake, and volcanic eruptions. These global catastrophes, wipe out 80% of life on Earth, including most of the dinosaurs, the world change an in instant. At this time, the trees, grasses, and shrubs, would have spontaneously burst into flame, and any human present, 
would have suffered instant third-degree burns over their entire bodies. After the red glow, the sky would darken as ash, and debris swirling around the globe created a creeping twilight. The dust cloud blocks the sunlight and would have taken months to wash out of the atmosphere. And when it did, the rain would have fallen as acidic rain, oxidized the ocean, and destroyed the species underwater. The surviving plants couldn't perform photosynthesis and die. Oxygen energy decreased significantly. This trailed up the food chain, causing the ecosystem to collapse. The reduction in plant life had a huge impact on herbivores' ability to survive, which in turn meant that carnivores would also have suffered from having less food available and died drastically. While most accounts focus on the spectacular violence of those first few minutes to days after the impact, it was the long-term environmental effects that ultimately wiped out most dinosaurs and much of the rest of life on Earth. The researchers called the environment of the time Luna. It was almost impossible to survive in such conditions. After the dinosaur's extinction, the ferns recovered quickly. Their seeds and pollen can survive harsh periods for longer. While the ferns and insects dominated the landscape, they provide a foundation for most terrestrial food webs. Following with tiny furry creatures, no bigger than 600 gram rats, roamed the ferny world, where flowering plants, with their nutritious seeds and fruits, were scarce. By 100,000 years later, the palms had taken over the fern. During the palm period, there were more foods. Mammals, with the size of raccoon, became appeared, and more diverse. 200,000 years later, the palm period gave way to the pecan pie period. When walnut-like plants arose, new mammals evolved to take advantage of the nutritious seeds. Mammal diversity increased threefold, and the biggest of the new species reached 25 kilograms, which is the beaver's size. After about 700,000 years later, legumes showed up. Peas and bean species provided protein-rich meals that further boosted the mammalian size and diversity. At this time, the mammal's size can be topped 50 kilograms. This is about the weight of a kangaroo or a snow leopard. This is also a 100 times size increase over those that survived the asteroid. The forests too had recovered. And then it took millions of years before biodiversity returned to healthy levels, making the Earth recovery period 125 times as long as the actual extinction. This brought us a message that it only took a moment to break the ecosystems and forever to rebuild. All of the non-bird dinosaurs died out, but dinosaurs survive as birds. Some types of bird did go extinct, but the lineages that led to modern birds survived. Initially, the survivors were small, with birds the first to experience evolution to larger sizes. Alligators and crocodiles. They had the saving ability to take to water. These sizable reptiles survived, even though other large reptiles did not. Frogs and salamanders. These seemingly delicate amphibians survived the extinction that wiped out larger animals. Lizards. These reptiles, distant relatives of dinosaurs, survived the extinction. Snakes. Although a number of snake species died out around 65 million years ago, snakes as a group survived. Turtles. Of the known species of turtles, alive at the time of the dinosaurs, more than 80% survived. The extinction of the dinosaurs was one such major event, eliminating a once dominant group of competitors, while some mammals survived. It took several million years for the mammals to evolve and even spark the eventual evolution of our own humankind. This wouldn't happen without having asteroid hitting the Earth. But what would happen if the asteroid never strikes and kills all dinosaurs? And this is even scary to think about. What would happen if such a disaster strikes again? Will humanity survive such impact? Or it will be another mass extinction? What do you think? <laughs>